Hello, welcome to the Monday, August 16th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Seewalde, Germany. Guy this weekend took a look at some attacks that he observed against his honeypot hitting an e-discovery uh, endpoint for exchange. Now, this particular endpoint can sometimes be used to retrieve messages if this feature is enabled and not properly secured. So no authentication may be required in this case. It's, I actually don't think uh, the particular CVE that uh, Guy suggests here that they're after, but that particular uh, vulnerability was patched just around the time when Guy first saw these scans starting. So there may be some uh, relationship here between that particular patch Tuesday's patches and uh, these scans. The scans are originating from one particular network at DigitalOcean, and that network is actually used uh, by a group that identifies itself as trying uh, to identify organizations exposed uh, services. Uh, they're going by the name of stretchoid.com, but don't really know much about that particular company or organization. And on Friday, we got yet another uh, great walkthrough by Pratt through the latest version of Danabot. Danabot is an info stealer. It's going after uh, banking information, typically. And in this particular case, uh, Pratt is walking you through how to analyze a Danabot infection that was triggered originally by a malicious email. And we got a really interesting paper by several researchers from the University of Maryland and the University of Colorado Boulder. They looked at amplification attacks that could be caused by middle boxes. Middle boxes are often thought of as proxies, but often they are actually not proxies in the original sense, uh, but really sort of more uh, deep inspection firewalls, next generation firewalls that essentially inspect uh, TCP connections. The problem appears to be that some of these middle boxes do assume that packets are getting lost and they're not seeing all of the packets necessarily. So they will in essence kind of try to fix a bad TCP connection, which also then can lead to some of the safety mechanisms in TCP being disabled. And that again leads to the ability to spoof TCP connections. One simple example is if you're sending data with your SYN packet. In the absence of SYN cookies, that data is buffered by the recipient. It's not processed until the three-way handshake is complete. And of course, an attacker that spoofed the SYN packet usually isn't able to complete the three-way handshake because because uh, they don't receive the responses. But uh, what they found here is, for example, if the attacker just continues the connection like it would if it would have received uh, the SYNAC and responded with the acknowledgement, well, uh, the firewall will essentially assume that uh, it just missed the SYNAC and it will continue the connection and then allow for reflective uh, denial of service attacks. Another interesting issue here is that in certain cases where the victim is sending a reset back to the middle box, well, a reset should terminate the connection. But again, the middle box here is trying to sort of fix things. And what it does is it will just resend the last packet it sent. So essentially just do a normal TCP resend, which of course is wrong here because that will just trigger another reset, which will trigger another other resend and the end result is a never ending loop between the middle box and the victim just flooding each side with packets. Interesting paper, definitely should look at it. They have a little spin on this, uh, looking in particular at sort of nation state implementations of uh, these middle boxes, like your uh, great firewalls and things like this. But many of uh, these uh, same systems, of course, are also often used in corporate networks. 
And remember what they told you in one of your early information security classes, never write your own encryption algorithm. Well, it looks like uh, some ransomware actors, in particular the Deep Blue Magic ransomware, took this to heart and they are now just using a simple commercial tool called Best Script Volume Encryption by Jedico in order to encrypt victims' drives. Nothing malicious about the tool. It's a legitimate tool. They're just installing it for you then using it to encrypt your drive they're of course throwing away the key on your end and they're also deleting volume shadow copies kind of a cheap way and maybe a little bit a lazy way of uh, doing the ransomware game but uh, probably effective nevertheless well and that's it for today so thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow